in the method of joint analysis. There are two ways of solving questions on trusses. How to analyze the forces in each member. There are two ways. And the first method is for the method of joints. We call it methods of what? Joints. And that's what we are tackling in this episode. So, but remember, the question can say using the method of what? Joints. Or using the other method, we'll tackle it. So first, let's look at the first method. And when you're giving the trust, you determine which method you want what? Use if the question is what? General. Are we good? So how do we go by the method of joint? First, the method of joint is based on the fact that if a truss is in equilibrium, then so is each of its joints and each of its members. We've already established that in the previous episode. So once you want to go by the method of joint, you consider the entire truss. So this is the first, the second. You consider the entire truss to be what? In equilibrium and once each member or each the entire truss is in equilibrium each member is also what in equilibrium are we good so if we establish that what then do we do and in this method the conditions of equilibrium are applied to the forces exerted on the pin at each joint Remember, the method is what? Method of joints. So we are dealing with what? The joints. And we apply the equilibrium what? Conditions at the joints. The only condition necessary to satisfy equilibrium is the force equilibrium. We know summation of forces horizontally. That's on the X is zero for equilibrium what? Structure. The same thing for the Y. It's also what? Zero. Are we good? So basically what we are trying to say is that now this is my trust and I have another trust here. If I'm to make analysis for the members, what's happening inside, I can take it joint by what? Joint. So let's see. If I take joint C, you know, I'm going to have this member. I'm going to also have what? This member. And we will also check for the reactions at the joints. This is at C. So this is happening at what C. So once I get to know the forces in this member at B, this is joint B. I already know the force here in the member CB. And I have my 80 kilonewton watt force. And I can also find the member the force in the member what AB. Are we good? And once I also know the force in this and that, I also I already know the force in that. And I'm done. I hope it's clear. So with the method of joint, you focus on a joint and analyze what's happening at or inside the members at that particular joint. I'm taking my time to explain the method of joint. You consider each joint and you draw a free body diagram for the joint and make analysis of what is happening inside the members forming that joint. So for example, in the second trust, if I want to make analysis, but we have a condition, we have conditions that we must obey to choose our first what joint. You don't just start from any joint. There are rules you have to obey because if you start the analysis from the wrong place, you may be what? Stuck and you can't find your necessary forces in the members. But I'm showing you how you can use the method of joint. In the next slide, you will see the rules. So if I want to start from the C, I'll just draw my point C. What's happening? I have this member here. I have this member. I have this member. And remember, I have what? An external what? Force also here. So basically, this is what? The free body diagram for joint C. Are we good? 
if I want to start with joint A, this is what's going to happen. I have the straight member, this one, the vertical one, they are all straight. I have this horizontal member and I have a reaction. It's a pin reaction. So I have an R what Y and I have a horizontal what reaction also. Are we good? We will solve many examples using the method of joints. So this is the first what method to use if you want to analyze what structures. The 30 degrees, the 45, they are all there to help you to make what analysis. So let's look at the conditions here. Are we good? So in applying the method of joint, it is necessary to start the analysis at a joint having at least one known force and at most two unknown forces. That's interesting. So before I start my analysis at a joint, first, that joint must have at least one known force and at most two unknown force. So you can't start your analysis from a point where there are more than two unknown forces or a point where there is no known force. It's interesting, right? So let's compare it here. Let's, let's finish so that I will explain it using the diagram. So second point, the reactions at the support may be obtained by considering the entire what? Trust as a free body diagram. Are we good? The free body diagram of each pin is then drawn, indicating the forces exerted on the pin by the members or external loads or support to which it may be what connected. So what we are trying to say here is that if you really want to use the method of joints to analyze your trusses, first, you have to start from a joint that has at least a known what? One known force. You have to, for example, this joint, it has one known force. You know, we know the magnitude of this force. It is known. And at most two unknown forces, and remember, we don't know the force in this member, these two members. They are what? Unknown. So yes, we can start our analysis from B because it has one known force and two, at most, two unknown what? Forces. If it has more two known force and one unknown force, it also qualifies. What we are trying here to say here is that mostly the unknown forces should not be more than two. But the known forces can be what? Many. Are we good? So the unknown, they are one. And this is also the second word, unknown. So this point B qualifies to what? Start our analysis. Let's look at point C. If we want to start the analysis from C, do we have any known force? No. This force is not to what? Known. For the starting, we want to start from what? C. You don't know this. We don't know that. Remember, there is also a reaction here. It's a ruler, so an R Y reaction. So basically, we have three unknowns. Three unknowns, which is what it violates the rule. Most, mostly, what two unknowns. But here at joint C, there are three unknowns. So joint C cannot start the analysis. What about joint A? Let's check. This force is not known. This force is not known. And we have a pin what? Reaction. So we are going to have two R, Y, and a horizontal R what? X. How many unknown? One, two, three, four. Four unknown. So we cannot start the analysis from what? A or C. The only place we can start our analysis is what? B. Of course, maximum of two unknowns. But once we start from B and we know this forces. We can now start with what? C, because this one is what known now. Are we good? The force we saw here is, not, is the same at the ends of the member. So this one is now known with two, this and that unknown. So we can make the analysis. Are we good? And what we have to also do here is that to start your analysis on the structure, first, Solve for the support reactions. 
solve for the values for of the support reaction and how do we do it the same way we solve for reactions on the equilibrium what structures the same thing is going to happen so now you consider the entire trust as a free body diagram and you use the external force to calculate for the reactions are we good so before you even start the analysis of the joint you have to calculate for the support reaction and with that i hope it's easy to calculate for them because we've already solved questions where we consider the entire body and we solve for the what the reactions so you can check that on the equilibrium what episodes so the same thing if i want to consider the second trust first i have to consider the reaction remember there's a reaction here a pin so two reactions the same thing at b an upward and a horizontal outward reaction so i'll use by the help of this external forces i can calculate for the reactions the value for the reactions and i can begin my what analysis are we good so basically this is the method of joints it's not it's, it's not difficult it's one of the easiest way of analyzing the forces in the members i like using it most because it's very simple you just have to apply your what f of x is zero f of what y is also what zero are we good and you are good to go so let's look at the problems we have four problems on method of joint which are solved in the next episode thank you